So in this video I'm going to show you my workflow when I shoot with Magic Lantern with my Canon 650D. I'm going to go through with what I do with the MLV app and then how I export my Cinema DNG and then what I do with those files in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're curious about that, stick around and let's get started. Okay, so this is the MLV app and it's open and right here I've got an SD card with some with a couple of shots we're going to import. Uh, to note, won't be grading these actual shots because the shot I want to grade, I've already exported it, so I'm gonna just use these to exemplify what I usually do. Okay, so this is what I do. I choose, I always put fixed bad pixels to auto, I always chroma smooth two by two, and in this case, in most cases with my camera I have to reduce the temperature here a little bit and not reduce it but change it rather to a cooler uh, state because I think it helps when it's imported to DaVinci and then in this case I only have another file so it's really simple to replicate but if you have like 15 files you can always just select the file you just worked on click on this icon here which is going to basically copy and you select what you want to copy all the the stuff just keep it as it is basically then you select your clips in my case just one and you paste it on the on the icon right next to it paste the receipt from clipboard boom there it is and this clip is now with the same changes I applied to the first one so as you can see they're both matching and that's basically it in terms of settings because I leave all the color grading to resolve moving on my export codec is CN cinema DNG lossless you access this by clicking the settings here these cog wheels and I use Cinema DNG lossless and the DaVinci Resolve naming scheme I also export audio but that's up to you and that's basically it then you click to export you click you select the folder and voila I'm not gonna do that right now because as I said my clip the clip that I want to show you is already exported so we're gonna jump to Resolve okay so here we are in Resolve this is the clip this is as is I haven't done anything to this clip so as you can see, uh, this is basically almost as I shot it, so I'm going to do some stuff here first. So this is the clip, never mind these all these clips I've been working on. So first thing we're going to do is going to go here to where it says Camera Raw, and we're going to change that to Clip, and we're going to select the color space to Blackmagic Design, and the gamma will automatically be set to Blackmagic Design Film, which is what we want. Basically what we're doing is we're telling Blackmagic, the Resolve, that this clip is from a Blackmagic Design color space, which is the best option when you're shooting uh, Magic Lantern RAW. Okay, moving on. What we're going to do now is create a couple of nodes here in our node editor. And, by, and what we have to do is simply press Alt-S and you have a node, press another Alt-S again and you have another node and I'm going to distance them as you can see here. I'm going to call this node input and I'm going to call this node output. Okay, what does this mean? What am I talking about input and output? I'm talking about color space and more specifically CSTs, Color Space Transform. This is basically, we're going to tell DaVinci Resolve where the footage came from, where, in which color space we want to work and grade the footage, and how do we want to <clears throat> send that out to be published. So in our import, we're gonna go into our library, all the effects, and we're gonna search for color, color, sorry about that, color, space transform right here there it is I'm going to apply it to the output and I'm going to apply it to the input as well and as you can see here in the input that's where we'll start we've got a bunch of options here in input color space so now we got to tell DaVinci Resolve okay this is coming from not really but from a black magic design camera so black magic design film gen 1 which is the log used the color profile input gamma we're going to select the same thing black magic design film and output color space we're going to select the color space on which we want to grade and work with which is DaVinci white gamut which is one of the best options and below that the gamma we will select DaVinci intermediate Moving on to the output, we select the output node. We're going to basically grab that DaVinci White Gamut color space and transform it into Rec. 709. So this is after the grade, hence we call this output. 
So I'm going to grab uh, Da Vinci Y gamut, which is what we exported from in the input, and Da Vinci Intermediate as the gamma, and now we're going to pick Rec 709. Sorry about that, Rec 709 and Rec 709. And the gamma, excuse me, is gamma 2.4. It's a reliable option commonly used. And there we go, and this is the footage as it is. I'm going to deactivate the notes so you can see the difference. So basically we went for kind, from kind of a log profile to a uh, basic grade done, basically uh, corrections and contrast and whatnot. But there's still room for improvement in this shot. It's still a little bit too dark for my, my taste, so I think we can try and change that. So we're gonna add, an, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna add a note. And as I told you before, this is where we're gonna work most of the time, okay, in between these two notes. So every correction you wanna do, every mask you wanna do is gonna be, be between these two input and output notes. So in the first one, we're just gonna play a little bit with the exposure. I'm gonna bump this up a little bit like this, really push that up. I'm, I'll introduce a bit of noise, but it's not a problem because I'm going to fix that later. So, other than the exposure, uh, just to clarify for the exposure, I went here to the HDR color wheels as opposed to the primary color wheels. We can also change the offset and basically change the exposure. But I prefer to do an overall exposure here on the color wheel. On the HDR, sorry, below global, you just push that up. I go back to the primary wheels. I'm going to adjust the contrast. I'm going to push this a little bit like that, and I'm going to push those highlights even further up to bring up and pop up that image a little bit more. And as you can see, it look, it's looking good, but that sky is completely blown out. So what we have to do is we create another node and we're going to mask that sky and bring those highlights down. So I'm gonna do that with a simple mask here. I'm just gonna use this custom one where I can select the area. As you can see, I'm gonna do a little rotation around the the area I want to affect and here we go these buildings may be a little bit here not too much and that's the mask we're going to apply some softness here so it kind of blurs and and feathers well into the rest of the the clip so it doesn't become very obvious that there's a mask there you adjust the mask whenever however you like and then we're just simply going to our highlights in the same node and we're going to bring it them down and also those shadows, we're going to bring them down as well. And right now what's happening is looking a little bit saturated and a little bit clip, not really clipping, but we just desaturate a little bit, you see, and we fix that. And we maybe play around with the color temperature a little bit, but not too much because I'm going to play around with that later. So that's looking pretty decent. Maybe the softness is a tad too much. See how it affects the image, the whole mask. So I'm going to actually adjust this one here as it doesn't, so I'm just, sorry for these adjustments. Okay, so that's looking a little bit better. This one needs to go a little bit inside like this, yeah, like that. And maybe that feather has to increase a little more. And now we can go back to the sky, which we've pretty much done with. I'm going to create another node here and I'm going to Messing around with the temperature, I'm going to warm this shot up a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit just like that. I want to give it a summer look, a summer feel. Now everything over the over on the top there is looking pretty much bad. So I'm going to have to reduce those highlights a little bit, I think, so as to not completely destroy the image. But that's basically me playing around. To be honest, this could be better. I'm really rushing through this. But I really just wanted to talk about the color space and not the grading itself. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm not a super genius grader yet. I'm still learning. I'm only in my first year of starting really learning DaVinci Resolve grading. Not editing. I've been editing for a long time. Uh, but grading specifically, it's only been like in the last year. So I'm still learning. But I felt confident enough to share about this, about the color space and all that good stuff. Because it really changes how a person grades and works in Resolve. And it really helps... <clears throat> the workflow and the way you work on your clips and you can export a lot more and you can take out a lot more of your clips if you use proper color space management with the CSTs, the color space transform effect which you apply to the nodes. Guys, this is basically it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please remember to leave a comment down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Dislike if you thought it was boring and didn't serve you as well. Either way, I thank you and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.